After 14 years of operation, the giant Hercules wooden roller coaster was removed. Taking its place would be Hydra, a floorless roller coaster that opened in 2005. The ride uses the terrain similar to Hercules, except it keeps a more compact layout and stays lower to the ground. The ride's stats include a height of 95 feet, first drop of 105 feet, max speed of 53 miles per hour, seven inversions, allegedly, we'll talk more on that later, and 3,198 feet of track. I remember watching the animation POV for this attraction and feeling really excited to check out this crazy looking roller coaster. That slow heartline roll, also known as a JoJo roll, grabbed my attention. I had to ride this roller coaster opening year. Well, I did ride this roller coaster that summer. My thoughts were then, well, it was fun, I guess, but nothing really memorable. Besides the JoJo roll, that is. Well, that was 16 years ago, and I'm ready to revisit this attraction. Fun fact, or not so fun fact, Hydra is technically the last brand new roller coaster to debut at Dorney. Both Stinger and Possessed are relocated attractions. That means Dorney hasn't gotten a brand new roller coaster since 2005. Presentation Dorney Park is an amusement park, so I wouldn't expect heavy levels of theming. That proves the case with Hydra, as this attraction has no theming. Well, outside from its neat-looking sign. The presentation aspect of this attraction is decent. The ride somewhat interacts with a log flume and steel force. The foliage and terrain surrounding this coaster is also well done. The color scheme, consisting of various shades of green and the pink OTSRs, really pop out on the midway. Nothing more really to talk about in this category. Presentation earns a score of 6. Ride Intensity With looping roller coasters, it's usually the ride intensity category that's going to shine. Well, Hydra isn't like most looping roller coasters. Starting off with a slow heartline roll right out of the station, Hydra shows its riders that this is no ordinary looping coaster. I hate to say it, but I think slow is a common denominator when discussing Hydra. There are many parts of the ride where I wish it would pick up more speed, but instead it left me wanting more. Anyways, after the Hardline roll, the ride takes a 180 degree turn to the right and heads up the lift hill. At the top, Hydra dives straight ahead, producing the only real moment of airtime for those riding in the back. The ride immediately enters an inclined dive loop, which is also immediately followed by a zero-g roll, corkscrew, and cobra roll. I love how all these inversions slash elements are back to back. It's just unfortunate that the zero-g roll and corkscrew are on the slower side. The cobra roll is oddly shaped. Just look how the entrance and exit of this element are so close together. After completing the element, Hydra flies up into a twisted airtime hill, but without the airtime, followed by another airtime hill, again no airtime, that leads into our final inversion, a corkscrew. After the inversion, Hydra completes an ascending 270 degree turn, followed by a turn to the right that ends on the brake run. The strongest forces of the ride are felt at the bottom of the first drop and during the cobra roll. The final corkscrew is another punchy moment, but nothing too whippy like you would find on an inverted roller coaster. Hydra has to be one of the weakest floorless roller coasters in forms of G-forces that I've ridden, which in turn earns it a 6.5 for ride intensity. Fun Factor When the best part of the ride is prior to the lift hill, that's usually not a good sign. As I mentioned already, Hydra really needs to be a tad faster to amp up the intensity. My favorite inversions are usually the zero-g roll, but the one on Hydra is so sluggish, it doesn't provide any of that good whip or weightless sensation. The layout may be unique, but the pacing is not good. The ride never really feels like it gets any momentum, just enough gas to push you through the layout. The best moments of the ride has to be the JoJo roll, first drop, and corkscrew. All three moments are great parts of the ride. The hang time on the JoJo roll is fun, and who doesn't like some airtime on the first drop? Finally, that last corkscrew is a little bit more whippy, reminding me of previous B&M creations, but again, not as intense like their inverted roller coasters or even some past floorless roller coasters like Kraken. These three elements are what's going to keep this attraction afloat, earning a 7 score in the fun factor. Originality B&M decided to take their traditional floorless mold and toss it out the window for Hydra. There are many unique features about this ride. First is the Jojo Roll, a one-of-a-kind inversion that delivers gobs of hang time. For many, this is the highlight of the ride. The next unusual element is the first drop. Most floorless roller coasters feature some sort of twisted drop, or at very least a small turn at the top before dropping. 
Hydra drops straight ahead, allowing riders to experience a nice pop of airtime. The final unique thing about Hydra has to be its collection of inversions. If you notice, this roller coaster has no vertical loop, a rare mission for a B&M looper. From what I could gather, this is the only floorless roller coaster by B&M to not feature a vertical loop. The other weird element has to be that inclined dive loop. RCDB has it listed as an inversion, however, I'm not convinced. It functions more like a turnaround than an actual inversion, though I guess they kind of do the same thing anyways, but it's about as much of an inversion like the overbank turn on Storm Chaser. Overall, B&M went out on a limb with Hydra, creating a unique layout that earns itself a 9 score in originality. Ride Smoothness When I first rode this roller coaster in 2005, I remember that it gave me a headache. I thought the Cobra Roll was too rough for a new roller coaster. Well, fast forward to 2011, and it was my same analysis. Fast forward once more to 2021, and this time, I didn't think the rattle was too bad. In fact, I had no head banging during the Cobra Roll. It's not a butter smooth ride like Talon, the other B&M in the park, but it's not so rough that it would prevent me from hopping back in line. Ride smoothness earns a score of 7. Okay, the final tally comes to 7.1, which is an average score, I guess. I wouldn't consider Hydra to be top tier, but it's not a dud either. I'm grateful that B&M tried something new instead of reverting back to their same old layout that we've seen them do time and time again. My personal score is going to be a 6.5. After that JoJo roll, I kind of sleep on the rest of the ride. I really want to love this roller coaster, but it just doesn't reach those levels. Honestly, Hydra and Steel Force are similar in the fact that they would be better roller coasters if they traveled a tad faster. Well, that wraps up my review of Hydra the Revenge. Have you ridden this floorless roller coaster? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please click on that like button and subscribe. That way you continue to get great content brought to you by X-Screen Thrills.